this is the uh, the ear, this part right here, the uh, the whole part. And again, you don't need to know any small parts, but this part here is called, has two names. It's called the auricle or the pina. Okay, that's the external ear, the part out here. Okay, and right here is the external auditory meatus or canal. Okay. One or the other, depends on what book you're reading, or sometimes both sort of things in the same book. Okay. Uh, this right here is your tympanic membrane or eardrum. The actual membrane has been is missing on this one here. As you can see in there, there normally is a membrane that, that goes across there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The uh, the membrane and again, you don't need to notice at least not for this, but probably for lecture to be questions on you know this being two layers of. Uh, you know, is, uh, well, make it simple. There's going to be two ep epithelial layers of connective tissue in between. That is attached to the ossicles. In particular, it is attached to the, uh, the incus, sorry, the malleus, okay, which in this model is uh, labeled six. Okay, now that's six. It's attached to the eardrum. It vibrates and sends that vibration to seven, which is the uh, incus, malleus, vibrates the incus, and the incus then sends that vibration down here to the stirrup, which is missing on this one. It's not missing, it's underneath the thing It's, it's missing. Okay. I'm not. I'm looking at this one here. Okay. The the uh, the the stapes or star is missing from this one. That normally goes in there and attaches to the attaches to the oval window. And then this right here is the uh, auditory tube or eustachian tube. Okay. So we have this tube here. Air comes up from the nasopharynx and equalizes pressure so that the pressure in the middle ear is equal to the pressure in the outer ear. And once the sound wave comes in, vibrates the tympanic membrane, vibrates the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, that vibration is transferred over here to the vestibule, and then fluid inside the vestibule is vibrated. Now, in lecture, you're going to get about the, uh, the, the bony and membranous labyrinth and the perilymph found in, in the bony labyrinth and the endolymph found in the uh, membranous labyrinth. But right now, all, all you need to worry about is that that sound wave is going to cause fluid to vibrate in here. And uh, as I showed in the previous model of the uh, cochlear duct, that vibration ultimately leads to tweaking of these hair cells that send out uh, information to the uh, to down by the cochlear branch, the vestibular cochlear nerve to the brain to send back information on here. Now, over here inside the vestibule, here, you're going to have organs called the maculae that are going to be for transferring information on balance. And the same thing here in these little semicircular canal, at the base of each semicircular canal, are going to be these uh, uh, Crista ampullaris uh, that send out also information on, on balance. Now, when you get into lecture, you'll see this a little bit m more involved than in that. For example, the semicircular canals are more involved with sort of dynamic equilibrium, where the vestibule, the macula inside them, are more to be concerned with uh, stationary uh, balance. So, again, that you don't need to know for, uh, for lecture. This way right here is the cochlea. Again, Cochlea is for sound. Then that other model that we looked at, it was a section that was right through here, okay, and we saw how complicated that is and how the organ of cordy, the spiral organ of cordy is, is found in there. This is the vestibular cochlear nerve, which leads through the internal auditory canal or meatus, okay, to send that information in that nerve to the brain. And I think that's it. All the bone area here. This is all temporal bone. These are all openings in the temporal bone. Okay? Mm -hmm.